Yes, uh, good evening. My name is Lucia Chalky. I'm with West Hartford, Connecticut Continuing Education. And this is my March Tours by Lucy show. And the reason why I do these shows with West Hartford Community Television is to share information with you about trips that we have coming up through the West Hartford Public Schools. Um, I'm the trip coordinator for the program. I've been with the program for 21 years. And uh, we have a wonderful, thriving, vibrant program here in West Hartford with day trips, uh, which I've had a great time with throughout the years. And I wanted to share some dates with you uh, on the trips that we have coming up scheduled until today. Um, which is uh, the March show. Uh, I will give you the number for continuing ed, which is 860-561-6900. They are open from 8 to 4.30, and they are eager to sign you up for the trips that I have coming up with the program. And uh, the department also has a website, uh, whps.org. You can click on Continuing Education and scroll through the day trips that we have coming up uh, for this coming year. And we have a lot of great, exciting trips coming up uh, with a full range of all sorts of fun things to do in your free time. And the first one we have coming up is on March 17th, and this is to the Boston Flower Show, which is located at the Seaport World Trade Center in uh, the waterfront in Boston, and we are going to see some great horticultural exhibits. We will see uh, some wonderful floral displays. Uh, the show is run by the Massachusetts Horticultural Society, and they do a fabulous job of presenting some great uh, floral uh, arrangements, and they have horticulturalists on staff uh, that will answer any questions that you have about your garden. And there's a one, lot of wonderful vendors there who show to uh, present you great um, articles for uh, gardening, uh, wonderful upscale vendors. And the programs are really chock full of great information uh, for you to uh, have the best garden ever. Uh, and we also, during this time in Boston, uh, it will be St. Patrick's Day, so we'll have an extra special day in Boston. And we'll be heading over for some free time on our own in the downtown area in the Funeral Hall Marketplace area. So we'll spend most of the day at the Flower Show and um, allow you to enjoy a little bit of downtown Boston, the Italian North End, uh, the Haymarket area, which has the wonderful vendors, and visit Quincy Market, which has a wonderful historic um, importance to Boston. It is the seat of uh, government of Boston. And you'll be able to do a little shopping, browsing, strolling, and visit museums nearby and see the wonderful uh, waterfront area, which has grown tremendously over the last few years. So this will be our first trip, and I'm very excited to be uh, returning to Boston. Um, I lived in downtown Boston for 10 years and uh, lived in the area and thoroughly enjoyed it and really love to share that with you. And I encourage you to sign up as soon as possible if you're interested in this trip because they do fill up very fast. So please call the program to register or, or go online, create an account. Uh, the second trip I have coming up this year is a trip I've done for 10 years to New York City, and I call it uh, the New York foodie trip. And what we do is we head into Manhattan and we drop you off at various parts of the city, and um, I give you great information about stores that you may visit to bring home yummy goodies to prepare at home. There's prepared foods. Uh, for instance, on the New York foodie trip, we visit a fabulous store on the Upper West Side of Manhattan called Zabar's. And Zabar's is one of those great uh, four generation stores that have started out as a little mom and pop shop which grew up and now takes up the entire block. Uh, they started as a smoked fish counter and you can buy some of the best smoked fish in Manhattan. And they are an institution, they are the retailing uh, food uh, family in Manhattan. They're all over the city, but the one that we visit, I think, is the original, and it's in the middle of thriving, bustling Upper West Side. When you walk into the store, you see a fabulous selection of over 400 cheeses. Uh, you will see barrelfuls of olives. You will see prepared goods galore. The smoked fish counter is a must-see. They give 
out samples. They're very generous with samples. They have their own in-house uh, bakery, which you could buy some wonderful bagels, rugula, black and white cookies, uh, babkas. Uh, they have wonderful brioche rolls, brioche bread, rye bread, Jewish rye bread, pumpernickel. Uh, really a fantastic selection of uh, what I call great carbs. And the bread is fantastic. And as you make your way through the store, you will see the pastas, the condiments, the spices they carry. They carry olive oils, vinegars, mustards galore from all over. Their prices are quite good. Uh, the place that you bite, just smell half a mile away, is they do their own in-house coffee roasting. And their prices are quite good. And they have coffee from all over the world. And what I like to say is your reward for going to Zabar's is the chocolate is at the register. So that is a great selection of um, chocolate to bring home. That is what I call your reward for going through Zabar's. And then we head over to Little Italy in Chinatown, which is a fantastic stop. We have a wonderful Italian grocery store that has goods from all regions of, of Italy. It is a fourth generation store. And I really do favor those wonderful neighborhood stores with the family has been uh, running for generations, the authentic goods from Italy, the um, terrific pastas, the in-house um, meatballs, the spaghettis. They have uh, wonderful baked focaccia bread, ciabatta bread. Uh, they have an astounding selection of cheeses from all over every region of Italy. Uh, they have wonderful salumi, they have soppressata, wonderful prosciutto, the wonderful Italian ham from Parma. Uh, they have wonderful um, canned goods, canned Italian tuna fish. They have chocolates, they have vinegars and oil, olive oils from all over Italy, the freshest uh, wonderful pastas uh, that you can buy in Little Italy. It's one street, uh, what I call the bookends. There's another store called Alevas, and in De Palos is the other bookend. Um, the family is so gracious. They're wonderful with samples. They're wonderful with education. And uh, a trip there is an absolute must-see. Um, you will come home with bags of really wonderful produce. Good, good Italian uh, family that really takes care of you. Through the Chinatown area, there's a wonderful Asian grocery store called Kaman, which you will find Asian products from all over, all over Asia. And this is a must-see. I give you some uh, recommendations about other stores and other restaurants in the area that um, you may visit. There's a wonderful Spanish grocery store in the area I've discovered some years back, which has a wonderful tapas bar. They have a nice sampling on Saturdays when we go of wonderful cheeses. The hams, chocolates, vinegars, um, jams and jellies from all over Spain. It's a really wonderful, wonderful store called Despaña. So I would direct you there at the same time. And uh, we end up uh, having a wonderful meal in Little Italy on our own cost. Um, the recommendations are everything from casual to upscale and formal, so you'll have a wonderful trip. I, I hope you, you, you come because we really very much enjoy our trip. And on May 19th, we'll be visiting Boston uh, for a Boston on your own. And what I do is I give you some uh, tips on what you may visit that day. We drop you off at Surface Road, which is in the north end between the north end and Faneuil Hall Marketplace. It is a central area where you can start your journey. You can visit, uh, walk the Freedom Trail, which is a great thing to do in Boston, and visit the museums, the old State House. You can visit the new State House. Uh, you can visit Beacon Hill in the Back Bay. You can visit museums such as the Museum of Fine Arts, which has a wonderful uh, e exhibit every time you visit, um, as well as their permanent collection. You can also visit the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, uh, which is the, called the Pink Palace in the Fenway, which is a very short walk from the MFA. Um, you can visit um, the Institute of Contemporary Art on the waterfront. Uh, you could spend time at the ball game if there's a, a game that day. You can certainly, within the time frame, come back that day. So lots of things to do in Boston. So I'll give you some great uh, culinary tips, uh, site shopping trips. You can shop galore in Downtown Crossing or in Faneuil Hall. So I'll give you a lot of great information that day. 
on June 2nd. I do my annual trip to the Metropolitan Museum in New York City. And uh, I enjoy this trip immensely because it has art from all over the world from the last 5,000 plus years. So if you have an interest in any section of the world, any period, the Met has it. And what we do is we give you a admission and an audio guide so you can take your time, take your pace throughout the Met and thoroughly enjoy. And my recommendation is to visit the galleries you're most interested in, come back again another year. And I have folks who do that every single year. They have uh, the best Monet collection outside of Paris. The Egyptian gallery is unequaled outside of Cairo. And it has a wonderful American section, American wing, with a Tiffany glass, a Frank Lord Wright designed room. It has wonderful uh, photography, wonderful modern art, wonderful Asian section, which is fabulous. The Costume Institute, if there's an exhibit going on, is very well received and well uh, chronicled and well visited in the city. So we leave, uh, we give you a really nice long day at the Met so that you'll enjoy it thoroughly. I give you lunch recommendations in the area. The Met is right in Central Park, so if you like to take a stroll through Mid Park, you're welcome to do that. Uh, there are some great sites to visit within Central Park also, so you can do that. Also, there are museums nearby you may visit, which are very close, but I would really spend the entire day at the Met. Um, on June 23rd, we'll visit our annual Newport Flower Show, and the theme this year is New Cottages which is uh, an interesting theme considering the, uh, the type of mansions you are usually visiting. Uh, they have a, a really interesting theme this year. The Preservation Society of Newport County runs the mansions and every time you go, you um, enhance future generations visit. The flower show is always beautiful. They always have a wonderful theme. They work very, very hard to put on a really great show every year. They're great folks. And we also have time on your own in the wharf area, uh, which you can visit, take a Newport cruise around the harbor. You can visit the Newport Art Museum. You can visit the Brick Walk, the Museum of Newport History. You can take a self-guided tour of the wharf area um, in uh, very close proximity to our pickup and drop-off area. The Visitor Center has a lot of great information uh, that we share with you prior to. We we'll leave you in a central location so that you can really enjoy it. And on June 29th, uh, we were doing our annual Red Sox Yankee game this year at Yankee Stadium. We have uh, wonderful seats out in the outfield for you, very comfortable seats. Seats are in the middle of the action. And we have a nice group of folks who come with me every year to these games, and they're great, great people, and I hope you can come. The trip is filling up very fast. I think in West Hartford we have one seat available. Um, so I would call them ASAP to sign up. And in the, in the event and a trip is filled up, we have a wait list, which really does work. And I wanted to share that also with you, is whenever there's an opening, we call you right away uh, to sign you up. Uh, so there is no worries about being on a wait list. And also, we partner with Farmington Continuing Education to fill seats for uh, their half of the bus. So you can uh, get in. Uh, either program will register you, but first, best to call West Hartford to uh, sign up with them first. Um, so the Red Sox Yankees, the next chapter of the rivalry will be a fantastic year. I'm really looking forward to baseball season, and I know my passengers are too because they're uh, diehard fans. On July 7th, we'll be visiting the Statue of Liberty. This is my 18th year on bringing folks to the Statue of Liberty. The bus fills up every single year. I encourage you to register early uh, because it is a wonderful trip. We drop you off um, at Battery Park for the ferry ride over to Statue of Liberty. You have tickets to visit the museum at the base of the statue, and you'll see Lady Liberty up close and personal. There are National Park Service tours you can take uh, that are fantastic. They do a really great job of educating us. Uh, immigration is a, a fantastic a way of finding out uh, what 
about the history of our country, your ancestors that came from other lands. There is a research uh, database you can look up your ancestors, where they came from. Uh, you'll come back with an uh, astounding knowledge of uh, immigration and appreciate uh, those who came here to make a better life for us. On July 14th, uh, we're visiting Plymouth, Mass. Uh, this is our whale watch for this year. One whale watch we'll be doing, and we'll be heading out of Plymouth Harbor to see the great whales of Stellwagen Bank. This is the busiest whale watching spot on the East Coast. So you are guaranteed to see some wonderful whales and uh, see uh, have a great day out in the water. Uh, so sign up quickly for that. On October 13th, uh, we have been visiting the 9-11 Museum in New York City for as long as it's been open. And we have a nice sign up already um, if you are eager to visit the refurbished Freedom Tower. Uh, the 9-11 Museum gives you a timed admission. You can take a tour with the staff there. Uh, there are volunteers who uh, live through 9-11 who take folks on tours around the museum. The memorial is outside. Uh, there is also St. Paul's Chapel and Trinity Church nearby you can visit. You can get the whole picture of that day and hear from the folks who uh, experienced it that day in New York City. So I, I'm, I'm eager to have you come with me. We've been many times and it has been an enriching experience to visit the museum. On November 3rd, we'll be visiting New York City again for what I call my further foodie finds trip. And what we do is we visit the Union Square Green Market, which is the largest and best green market in the city. They have producers come from six states to sell produce, fish, meat, baked goods, wine, cheeses. And it's just an amazing stop um, if you are a cook. Uh, there is a, a vegetable uh, stand where I visit uh, to visit to get my Thanksgiving vegetables every year. It's called Paffenroth. They've been there for many years and a lot of the vendors are very uh, generous with samples, so you can sample their goods prior to buying, but it was a really a great trip, and the top chefs in the city visit that to buy their produce and meats and cheeses and fish for their restaurants, so it's a great trip. And then we visit Little Italy in Chinatown, um, again, uh, to visit Kaman and visit Apollo's in uh, Little Italy in Chinatown. Uh, again, the uh, vendors are fantastic, and you'll really enjoy it. One trip we have coming up in the fall, which we do not have a definite day yet, which we'll be sharing with you, is a trip to the Vanderbilt Mansion in Hyde Park, New York. And the mansion has gone through an extensive renovation uh, last year. It took pretty much the entire year to renovate. And we'll be visiting that mansion in Hyde Park and also visiting the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, which is the uh, Caterina de' Medici restaurant we'll be visiting. We'll be picking out a nice menu for you that day, and we'll have the date for you as soon as we're able to book it. Uh, you can check online. We do update online on a regular basis. If you'd like to get an email uh, with the date, uh, I will give you my phone number and my email at the end of the program. You can contact me or the program. Um, on November 23rd, we'll be visiting Woodbury Common on Black Friday. And this is a trip I'm resurrecting. I had it years ago. Uh, I used to do a frequent shop till you drop trip to Woodbury Common. And this is a great outlet an hour north of Manhattan. And it has a lot of the major stores have their outlets. Plus there are designers from New York City whose only outlet is in Woodbury Common. So you're sure to find some great buys and very, very, um, very good bargains there, and I expect this is one of these places that's open 24 hours after after Thanksgiving, so may very well be open all all night. But we'll be leaving at a, a fairly fairly good uh, reasonable hour for you to shop. So if you are a shopper, this is a place for you, and I'm excited to uh, offer this to the program this year because I really have enjoyed all my trips there. Uh, the other two trips, the last two ones we have scheduled right now, uh, my annual. First Saturday in December, day on your own in Manhattan. And what we do is we give you an extended time in the city. We leave at 6.30, get back at 9. So if you're listening, uh, if you'd like to visit a museum, uh, shop to your drop, uh, visit Radio City for our show. They have several during the day that you may 
uh, during the course, go to a Broadway show, uh, just visit a friend, a relative, enjoy the holidays, enjoy the, the shops on Fifth Avenue. Uh, this is a good day to go. Uh, we fill up every year, so I know the sign-up has been very good for this thus far, so if you're interested, uh, please do come with us, and we uh, pick up and drop off at a really convenient location for you. We have two stops. We have one at the Metropolitan Museum, and one at Rockefeller Center, so that will give you get you close to whatever you'd like to do that day and give you a lot of great tips on culinary recommendations, uh, sites to visit, things that are going on in the city, tours you can take. Uh, there's a lot, lot to do in the city that day, and it's the busiest shopping day in Manhattan. So it's a insanely busy day, but we we get through it every year, and it's a lot of actually a lot of fun to come back with whatever experience we've had that day. And the last one we have scheduled right now is December 4th. We are visiting uh, Radio City for my 19th year in a row. We have wonderful orchestra seats we plan for you. Um, the show is um, a real classic with Santa, the living nativity scene, the Rockettes, uh, the costumes change, the music changes. Uh, every few years they update it and upgrade, but it's an amazing show. You can tour the Radio City Music Hall prior to. You can see the holiday tree outside of Rockefeller Center. You can take a tour of the NBC Experience. What we do is we have a, a program uh, at two o'clock and we leave so that you would have an opportunity to have some lunch, do a little shopping prior to the show and then leave right after the show um, at 3.30 and then return home. So it's a nice pleasant day if you like to visit friends and enjoy the show with them. Uh, we are very accommodating for folks coming in to meet people and that is a good day to do it. The other thing I wanted to mention, we are working on a date. Uh, by the time you this is aired, this may very well be uh, set. Uh, we are adding for the 2018-19 uh, season, we are adding a trip to the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. We're looking at various dates, times. We are shooting for a Saturday matinee, um, either in November or in April of 2019. So please stay tuned for that date. And we will share that with you as soon as we have it. We're looking at um, all sorts of possibilities, uh, but definitely a Saturday matinee. Uh, if you see this opera trip, um, I would encourage you to register right away because it books up very quickly, very, very fast. And we also offer some really uh, good seats for the programs. And we have a, a thriving, vibrant uh, community that enjoys opera, which is very passionate about opera. So I would encourage you to register as soon as you see it. And again, uh, my name is Lucy Ochaki. My email is toursbydesign, T-O-U-R-S-B-Y-D-E-S-I-G-N at gmail.com. You can email me for um, advanced notification on things that are coming up. You can certainly call the program. They will get in contact with me. We will answer any questions you have about the trip, the duration of the trip, uh, what is nearby. I'm always getting really great uh, information about trips that are coming up and things that are uh, doable in the city, and we will be adding more throughout the year. So please look out for it with the continuing ed catalog. And also, I'll leave you my cell number. You can call me or text me at this number at 860-414-1024. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So again, um, call Continuing Ed as soon as you hear about a trip. Uh, we re really like to uh, have your interest expressed in advance to make sure it's good to register early because then you will guarantee that the trip goes. And that is our, our program, um, our mantra, things that we have been passionate about throughout the years. And I remember coming into Continuing Ed the first year I came in, they did two trips a year for day trips and the program expanded uh, when my interest expanded in the program. So they've been very good. Uh, they're very encouraging of your ideas. So keep them coming. And I thank community television here in West Hartford uh, for allowing me to share this information with you. And you can also contact them to contact me. So um, call me, text me, call the program, and I look forward to seeing you on all my trips this year. So be well and see you soon. Thank you.